In the name of God, creator, redeemer, and sanctifier. Amen. The story in today's gospel about blind Bartimaeus is so rich in meaning for us that it's worth looking at from a couple of perspectives. The story as we read it focuses on Jesus and Bartimaeus as they are the principal characters. But there are others. Let's assume that we are members of the crowd in Jericho as Jesus is making his way to Jerusalem. Jericho was known as a resort city where Herod had built his winter palace because of fresh water springs and the warm weather. Because the city drew the rich and powerful, it also attracted beggars and those without a home. Perhaps we're fairly well off people, maybe merchants, who are able to vacation in Jericho. And we're curious about Jesus, so we join the crowd in the main road as Jesus leaves the city. We're somewhat embarrassed by the poor people gathered along the road, and one of them, a blind man, keeps yelling to get Jesus' attention. We tell him to be quiet, to let the famous visitor to our city have a peaceful walk and have a good impression of Jericho. But the blind man yells even more, calling Jesus by name and using the title Son of David to get his attention. We tell him again to be quiet, but he yells even more loudly, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. We hope Jesus doesn't hear him so that we can enjoy his presence among us, undisturbed by this noisy beggar. Suddenly Jesus turns his head toward the blind beggar. Oh no, he heard him. Worse, Jesus is asking that the, he be brought to him. Someone from the crowd helps the blind beggar find his way to Jesus, interrupting what had been a pleasant morning. As Jesus and the beggar meet, we learn the name of the blind man, Bartimaeus. He's been yelling, have mercy on me, so maybe Jesus will just heal him and get back on his way. No. Jesus asks Bartimaeus what he wants him to do for him. Isn't it obvious? Why is he asking? Doesn't Jesus know that a blind man would want his sight returned? We sometimes really don't understand the attraction of Jesus to the crowd, this Jesus who seems to miss the obvious. The blind beggar Bartimaeus responds, teacher, let me see again. Indeed, why does Jesus ask, what do you want me to do for you? Why does Jesus ask us what we would like him to do for us? Certainly, Jesus knows what's best for us even before we ask. But Jesus sees Bartimaeus as a whole person, not just as a blind person. When Bartimaeus asks Jesus to have mercy on him, Jesus doesn't assume that he wants to see. Maybe there is something else Bartimaeus wishes for. Maybe that his visual impairment is not all there is to know about him. I once asked a person without a home what she most wanted. She said she wanted a key, because a key meant that she would have a secure place to store things. She didn't have much to keep safe, but she had things that were important to her that she didn't want to have to carry with her all the time. Jesus teaches us to pray, to cry out, as Bartimaeus did from the side of the road, to ask God for what we need, like daily bread. We ask that God's will be done, even as we know it will be done, even without our asking. In the story of blind Bartimaeus, I think Jesus asks because he wants us to ask those we are called to serve, what do you want me to do for you? It's easy for those of us with advanced degrees or in positions of power or wealth to assume that we know what's best for others. It's one of my complaints about the interventions of wealthy philanthropists and foundations in their schools or communities. They decide how they will spend their tax exempt funds, often with their own agenda and without asking, what do you want me to do for you? Asking that question is good stewardship, using our time and resources wisely to meet the real needs 
not out of a sense of obligation, but out of thanksgiving to God for all that God has done for us. This is Stewardship Sunday, and I hope that you brought your pledge cards to offer in a few minutes. But more than that, I hope you talked with your families and prayed over your pledge, discerning how you can best use your time and money to advance the work of God and the church. I want you also to consider a pledge of your time. For some of us, time is more abundant than money. But flipping the question so that we ask Jesus, what do you want me to do for you? There are many opportunities for ministry. Pastor Sacy and Janice Pedersen have reinvigorated the lay pastoral care team. When New to You reopens, there will be ways to volunteer your time. As we work our way back into the normal rhythm of church life, we need openers and closers, ushers, tellers, altar guild, acolytes, singers in the choir, tech team, and many others. Come talk with any of the clergy to ask, what do you want me to do for you? Jesus also asks us, what do you want me to do for you? How do we answer? To make us successful? To bring us closer to him? To help us serve God and our neighbors? Maybe we answer with Bartimaeus, my teacher, let me see. Let me see, to see beyond the superficial, beyond our immediate needs and wants, to see as when we say, oh, now I see, seeing as understanding, I see what you mean. We use seeing as a metaphor for a lot that we perceive beyond using our eyes. We say, I see, when we mean that we understand. Churches and other organizations draft vision statements to convey what they see as their role in society or what they hope to be known for. When we ask Jesus to let us see, we are asking for vision, for understanding, for deepened perception of others and the needs of the world. My teacher, let me see again. Amen.